Hi, I'm Dawn Cavanaugh, APQS National Education Director. I've been quilting for a very long time, gosh, well over 20 years. And during that time, I think I've done well over 3,000 quilts for myself and other people. Well, you can guess that I didn't use the same exact thread on every one of those 3,000 quilts. In fact, I often chose to wind my own bobbins just to get a specific color or a specific style of thread that I wanted to really make the quilting stand out. Whether I was doing a very traditional quilt like you see behind me where uh, one color of thread was appropriate in the center, but I, I might have wanted a different color bobbin thread in the borders, or I've moved to something more modern like you see on the pillows behind me. Depending on the project, I wanted to be able to use different styles of bobbin thread as well as different colors. Well, one of the great things about APQS long arm quilting machines is that every single machine comes with a separate APQS designed turbo bobbin winder. So I don't have to push my machine or run and quilt with it to be able to wind bobbins. I can get every bobbin ready to go before I'm ready to even start my quilting. So I don't have to stop quilting as I'm working, just waiting for a bobbin to get filled. The turbo winder has easy tension adjustments and it's super simple to load and thread different styles of bobbins as well as thread. So I'd like to take just a few minutes to show you how to put your turbo winder together and to change the tension and use it for different types of thread for your APQS quilting machine. Your APQS turbo winder will come with everything you need to wind your own bobbins. It will include a thread stand, a thread mast to keep the thread coming off the end of the thread stand, a couple of washers we'll use to mount these two pieces. You'll also find a small black neoprene washer in your baggie. This is helpful when you're using bobbins like metal bobbins, for example, that might tend to slip a little bit if they don't have a slot cut into the bobbin for winding thread. And of course, you'll have a power cord and a foam guide to help support the thread, uh, thread cone rather while it's sitting on the machine. All you'll really need to assemble it will be a handy pliers. I'm going to start by adding the actual thread stand, the shorter piece. You'll see that it already comes with a nut and a locking washer installed on the bottom. Grab the brass colored washer, the one with the smaller opening, there we go, and slip it right over the end. Then simply add it to the top of the winder and rotate it until the winder post is firmly inserted. Let's raise the camera so that you can see a little better. There we go. And of course, use your pliers to tighten that up. Next, we'll install the thread mast. It will already have a nut installed on its base. You'll need the larger washer to attach this. Simply slip the larger washer over the base of the thread mast, and that's going to go into the opposite hole across from the thread stand itself. Of course, the fastest way is to simply spin it around and around and around until it's all the way down into the actual winder housing itself. So once we get close, you'll notice that it's going to start to tighten up. Let me zoom up a little bit so that you can see that here. There we go. It's starting to tighten up. We want to make sure that the actual mast itself, right at the top, is aimed directly over our thread stand. So match up this U-shaped piece right over the thread stand so that your thread will come straight up and guide properly down to the tensioner. Now, if you can't quite tighten it up in that exact position, align it and then use your pliers to tighten the nut in the position and keep it in that same locked location. Next, add the foam support right over the thread stand and push it down gently so that the Velcro holds it in place. Well, all that's left is to make the electrical connection. I'm going to turn the winder around so that you can see the back side of the winder. Right here, we've got the access port for the incoming power cord that's included with the winder. Take your power cord and insert it directly into the outlet on the back. And of course, plug the other end 
into your power outlet. If you don't live in the United States or Canada, APQS will include a transformer for your turbo winder. However, you may need to locate an adapter to convert the plug for the transformer to the outlet that matches your wall. If your bobbin winder suddenly stops, of course, first check the outlet and your fuse in the house to make sure everything is okay. But your bobbin winder is also protected by a fuse right near the power input. This is actually called a power input module. I'm going to set it down so I can grab my screwdriver and I will reach right here in the middle where the plug inserts into the winder and pull forward to expose the fuses. See if I can turn it so that the camera can actually see those. There they are. So the fuse that is actually closest to the turbo winder is the one powering the winder at the moment. The one that is forward facing is a spare. So you can take the spare, put it in the rear position, push it back in, and you're back in business. Fresh from the factory, the thread path will be taped to the turbo winder. The thread is going to come directly from the cone, straight up to the guide above the cone. From there, it's going to travel right down to the tension assembly. Let me zoom in a little bit so that you can see a little better. There we go. The thread will pass through the top eyelet, through the tension discs, and then out the bottom eyelet before traveling across the winder to the bobbin and the winding mechanism itself. Some threads, like the one you see here, tend to slip and puddle down around the bottom of the cone. For those instances, APQS has included a thread net. The thread net can stretch right over the cone and help control some of that spillage. The easiest way to load that for many people is to take the cone and slip the thread net up from the bottom, making sure that the thread exits directly out of the top. Then put it back on the winder and make sure that the thread pulls right out of the top. This will keep your thread from slipping down and getting caught on itself or on the actual spool. Well, the thread net does do a great job of keeping all of that slippery thread in control. But I have to admit, if I'm changing lots of different colors, I'm just not very patient enough to change the net with every single cone. So I'm going to share a little trick with you that I've done for many years to replace the thread net. I've got a piece of batting about one inch by about three inches long, and I'm going to roll that into a thin little Tootsie Roll. I want it to be a small little tube. There we go. Just a little tube. I'm going to slip that right in the top of that thread guide above the cone. Just like that. Well, now with that little piece of batting up there doing the job of the thread net, it holds on to the thread nice and firmly all the way back to the cone so that it can't puddle down on the side. Now, of course, that does add a little bit of tension, so I will need to adjust the tension on the bobbin winder appropriately. I've turned the winder slightly so that you can hopefully see the top eyelet above the tension assembly and the bottom eyelet. The thread is coming directly from the thread mast and the thread guide above the cone. So I'm going to take that thread right through the top eyelet. Then I need to bring it between the tension discs on the winder itself, right down in here. Oh, my hands are in the way. Let me see. There we go. So I've come between the disc. You can see it right here. Make sure the thread is between the discs. Pull firmly both above and below that. See if I can get my hand out of the way for you. To make sure that it is seated tightly between the discs. But we need to come out or exit that lower eyelet. Probably should have put my glasses on. <laughs> there we go. So from the cone through the top eyelet, between the pressure discs on the winder, and then out the bottom outlet eyelet. So then it's going to travel over to our bobbin. I've changed the camera angle so that you can get a much better view of the actual tension assembly on the turbo winder. 
as I rotate the knob clockwise or to the right, it tightens up the pressure between the two discs. And as I turn it left or counterclockwise, it will loosen the pressure. In fact, I'll turn it several revolutions so that you can start to see that spring come away and the two discs then are a little bit farther apart, a little looser. It's always important to double check and make sure that your thread is actually between the discs and that it hasn't accidentally slipped out in front of the discs, caught in the spring for example, or in another area that it might get trapped. So if you're, if you're having problems, just like with the quilting machine, one of the first troubleshooting steps, simply re-thread. So our thread will be coming from the tensioner across to the bobbin that will be installed on the winder mechanism itself. And before I put the bobbin in, I wanted to educate you on how the bobbin is actually going to be wound. This little crescent or half moon shape is actually the bobbin winder switch. This small rod or piston that you see is what pushes against the thread as it winds. And as the bobbin gets fuller, it pushes this half moon away until it actually shuts off the winder. The screw that you see right in front is holding on to that little piston and keeping it in place. So if your thread happens to be winding too full on the bobbin, we'll want it to shut off a little bit faster. So we'll loosen this screw and slide the piston slightly to the left, which means it will push on the thread more quickly and shut the switch off. Of course, if it's not winding enough thread on the winder, we'll, on the bobbin rather, loosen the screw and slide the little piston out just a little bit and tighten up the screw again. That will let more thread wind on the bobbin itself. Slightly adjust it now just so that you can see how that's going to work. I've loosened the screw. Maybe need another little turn. There we go. And now you'll be able to see that I can slide that pin in or out and then tighten the screw again. You might need to experiment a little bit as you use different types of threads as to what setting is proper. And of course that will be slightly different if you're using a larger M bobbin. We will have preset that at the factory to shut off at the proper fill for you. This particular winder I'm demonstrating today was set for the L or smart bobbin size. So you can see that there is quite a bit of difference between the two and how much thread is going to be wound on those will be dependent upon the position of that little piston. You have two options to prepare the actual bobbin for winding. One option is to take the thread tail and come from the inside of the bobbin case right out through one of the guides and then hold on to that thread tail lightly as you wind. Of course you will push the bobbin right onto the spindle and then lightly hold on to the tail until it's made a few revolutions around. Then if you give it a quick tug, that tail will pop off. Just push the half moon directly towards the bobbin, just like this. A little tug and off comes my thread tail. You can also simply take your winder and attach the bobbin and then wind your bobbin thread several times around the bobbin. You want to wrap it in a counterclockwise motion and hold on to the tail and engage the winder. Sometimes I don't want the bobbin to be completely full, for example, when I'm winding invisible thread. So to turn off the winder, just push the switch away, just as you saw me just now. This starts it, and push it away to stop it. It's that simple. Now to check if your winder's tension is right, take a wound bobbin, and using a fingernail, push down firmly into the layers of the bobbin itself. It should not feel spongy, but it should feel very firm and taut. APQS new machines ship out with aluminum bobbins, 
which are much lighter weight and give superior tension. However, some customers may have quite a stash of metal bobbins left over from a previous APQS style quilting machine. Notice that this particular bobbin does not have any slot to lock onto the little spring on the actual winder. In that case, use the rubber neoprene washer that came with your bobbin winder. Slip that right onto the shaft. Push it all the way back, which will give your bobbin something to grasp so that when you turn it on, it will spin properly. Remove the washer for regular bobbins or aluminum bobbins. Here's another quick tip if you're winding several different types of colors on your bobbin winder. Rather than trying to fit each one through the thread guides and pull it all the way through, a fast way to do that is to simply cut off your bobbin right here and then also remove the cone and cut the thread out here away from the cone. That leaves this nice long tail on the top so that you can simply grab your next cone of thread and tie it on to begin again. Well, you don't have to tie a fancy knot to tie on your new thread when replacing a cone on your winder. Just bring the two ends together so that they're facing down and make a loop with those two ends. Make sure the camera can see it here and slip those two ends right through the center of the loop that you just made. When you pull, you'll form a single knot that you can then pull right through all of the thread guides all the way down to your bobbin. Just make sure that the thread has remained between the two tension discs as you pull. If you're using a cone of thread that's quite a bit shorter than the actual thread guide itself, there's a chance for that thread to get tangled up on the top of the spindle. So instead, grab another cone and simply slip it underneath the cone you intend to use. That will get it up high enough to make sure that the thread comes right off the end and feeds correctly down through the tensioner. Don't be afraid to experiment with different types of threads both in the top or even in the bobbin. The APQS Turbo Winder will let you wind your bobbin consistently from the beginning of the bobbin all the way to the end and it'll also be super fast. That makes it a lot more fun to experiment with different threads in the top as well as the bobbin and explore more creative options for your long arm quilting. Check us out on our APQS YouTube quilting channel where you'll find more helpful tips on using your APQS long arm, including tips on using different types of threads in the top as well as the bottom. Also, we invite you to visit our Facebook page and stop by APQS.com for more helpful tips and information about APQS long arm quilting machines.